Initiative in Rust. Learning Rust involves learning a few weird concepts. One of them is this thing uh, that people talk about as ownership. What is an owner? A variable, I'm um, sorry, an owner is a variable that is responsible for deleting the data that it represents. When the variable ends its scope, any data that it owns is deleted. That is all the owner does. Formally, we say that the data types drop implementation is invoked. If you're not a Rust developer yet, though, don't worry about that. One thing to remember is that this notion of property is actually very stretched. It's a very stretched and kind of abused metaphor. Unlike property rights in real life, ownership confers kind of no benefits to the owner. The owning variable doesn't have some preferential access to the data that it is responsible for or that it owns. Nor can owners in some way prevent others from accessing what is owned. Uh, they're not really very successful owners. In the real world, a property owner can exclude others from accessing and kind of have an exclusive right. That doesn't exist in Rust. Rust is only interested in cleaning things up once they are invalid. This leads to the question, like, why ownership exists? Why does it exist? And in Rust, we don't have a garbage collector. Rust needs to know when it is safe to delete data. Other programming languages that say Java, JavaScript, Python, many others rely on a program running that is running alongside your program that's called a garbage collector. The garbage collector's job is to check whether it is safe to delete things. But including a garbage collector actually imp imposes runtime costs. It also makes performance less predictable by introducing latency and pauses and so forth. Uh, so if it's possible, we would really like to live without them. And so Rust has to do something else, and that is ownership. Because by design, Rust will only ever allow a single owner. So when that owner leaves scope or becomes invalid, it must be safe to delete the owned data. Let's take a look at how ownership works. To create an owner, you create a value and bind it to a variable. This term binding to a variable is a formal way of saying assignment. Anyway, once you've created the data, you create an owner. So in our case here, this is a little example where I have a variable named elements. And it has been created with this call to new, which is a static method on the vector type. Uh, and now elements is the owner of this vector, which happens to have no members. Well, actually, no, no elements inside it. We can transfer ownership. In Rust, though, it's because, you know, Rust likes to be difficult. Transferring ownership is actually called moving. Uh, and perhaps confusingly, the opposite of moving things is copying. We can either have a what we call move semantics, which is that ownership moves to a new owner, or we have copy semantics, where the data is actually duplicated and now we have two owners. So we have two ways to move. The first is assignment, and the second is function calls. When we have ownership uh, that is transferred through assignment, it looks as though uh, the first variable would still be valid to use. Uh, 
so in this case we've got a two-line program uh, we have a variable named elements which we had before and then we kind of give it a new name called items now in most programming languages both elements and items would be considered local variables and so you could freely use either name in the third line which we haven't written yet in Rust you will only be allowed to use the new name because ownership has actually moved to that place elements is in sense invalid there the other way to transfer ownership or move ownership is by moving into a function in some sense uh, so I've got a, a function here find underscore largest and it looks through <laughs> a vector and I've muddled up the names here so that's a apology for the slide so we've got a variable named elements and the elements uh, variable should be sent into this find largest thing but um, hopefully you'll forgive me that I have actually forgotten to rename uh, this now one thing to remember well to keep in mind as you go forward is that functions that take references to variables as arguments such as ampersand items or ampersand elements or ampersand mute items slash ampersand mute elements do not move owners that is the ownership stays in the same place but you're actually sending a reference to that variable into the into the function <clears throat> the end of the life cycle of an owner is its end and when the owner's scope ends or when the uh, owner becomes invalid as we saw with the assignment case any resources that it owns are deleted in the assignment case it was slightly different because the owner has, owner has transferred uh, and so once there is no owner to the data it the, that data is deleted one thing to note is that for loops can be a really confusing case here is a for loop uh, iterating over the elements variable that we created earlier so we have an, a for loop saying for element in elements you might think that after we've gone through this uh, that will be able to access elements again because elements would still be in local scope of uh, the, the line after the for loop but actually ownership transfers into the loop meaning that uh, the elements variable becomes inaccessible after the loop finishes this makes more sense as you become more familiar with Rust, but it's one of the things that really confused me a lot when I was starting. Mm, but to make things even more complicated, not all for loops work in that way. If you have a reference to the variable, in this case a reference to elements, you can still access elements after the for loop has finished. Or if you have a mutable reference to elements, you can continue to use elements again. Looping over references does not move ownership. Ownership stays where it was. The reference is being iterated over. And this is similar to how using references and function arguments does not move ownership there either. There is one last special case data without an owner in the place where you're most likely to encounter this is string literals they behave slightly differently there are a few places in in rust code where there is kind of no owner instead they are kept alive for the whole program this is why variables of string literals have the type ampersand stir which is a reference to a stir or more formally called a string slice because they don't actually own the data that they refer to even if they are the only variable that refers to a literal uh, 
I'll explain that in a future video, what I mean there. But it, this is the end of the ownership introduction. I hope that you've really enjoyed uh, the talk. Please ask any questions you'd like in the comments, and I will try to get to them as fast as I can. Thank you so much. I am Tim McNamara. You know me as uh, Tim Clicks, and here are a few links that might be useful. Very last, the very last thing to note is that my book Rust in Action explains this in depth, and here is a discount code for forty-two percent off uh, from uh, when you buy the book at the publisher. Thanks very much. Enjoy learning Rust.